Hello, this is Gio. Hey, I'm back in my pinball room today and I'm trying to test out some boards today. These are uh, Stern uh, LDA 100 Revision C, if you can see that. These are lamp driver boards for the Stern um, pinball games, but they also are 100% compatible with the old Bailey games. And that's what I have right here. This is my Super Spall Bailey game. And one of these actually came out of this uh, pinball. I actually uh, replaced uh, the, the lamp board in here with a brand new uh, uh, light board capable of LEDs. And I eventually want to put LEDs in this game. But I do want to try to fix these two boards. One I think is pretty bad. A lot of lights out. Another one maybe just a few. But hopefully we'll do that today. Okay, before I can diagnose what's wrong with these boards, I actually have to, I, I downloaded a copy of the uh, Future Spa manual. And this is the schematic printout of, or at least part of it, I cut off some of it, of the actual uh, lamp driver board. And you want to, uh, even though these are compatible with, let's say, all Sterns or old Bailey games, you do want to download or purchase a hard copy of the actual game that you're sticking these boards in. Because if you notice, uh, the schematic makes references to, let's say, lower uh, S, uh, lower first U, lower E, etc. And these are specific references to the particular la uh, lamps that are in your play field. And so if you're trying to diagnose this thing, you're gonna turn this thing on and see which lamps don't work, which ones are stuck on, etc. It's gonna be really difficult if you're using a different manual with different named references. So uh, most of these things you can download, uh, and so I would recommend doing that. Okay, so I went ahead and opened up the back box and you can see a number of boards. The board we're interested in is in the lower left and that is the lamp driver board. And you can tell that the one I have in there is a lot newer than the one I'm trying to test or the two I'm trying to test. And this is a replacement board uh, from Alltech Systems. Uh, you can find them at uh, www.alltechsystems.com and you can purchase these boards. The great thing about these ones is you can convert them to LEDs and so you do need, unlike let's say Gottlieb machines, um, you do need a specific board if you want conversions for the Stern and Bailey uh, games. Uh, it won't work and you know the LEDs will not work unless you get a specific board for those. Uh, for Gottlieb's and stuff you can just stick in your LEDs right away and uh, it, it'll run with the old boards. That might be in the way of the camera there. Like that. And then you just very carefully stick in your connectors making sure you get all the pins in. Don't uh, sometimes you can get go off. It's it's if you go off a little bit, the little key in the connector will stop you. So uh, it's pretty much elementary. Just be careful you don't bend the pins. There you go. Okay, so I have my game plugged in. I got my little cheat sheets ready. I actually um, blew this one up so I can see the connectors a, a little bit better and I opened up the little uh, coin door here uh, because when you when you turn it on at the bottom if I can find a little hole there we go things will power up give it a second There you go. I think this is the better, well, actually you could see a lot of lights gone, but you don't test it this way. What you want to do is you go to the coin door and you find this little button here and then you pr pr press it once and that should do, the, the first push of it is the lamp test. If you, if you push it twice, you'll get into a different cycle and you might have to turn off your uh, machine again and reboot it. But uh, the first push of the button is your lamp test. 
So you see a number of lamps flashing and that's what they're supposed to be doing. But you also see a number that are completely out, um, like the F and U. Now a couple of things that you want to do before you actually do a test is you want to make sure that the bulbs actually work. And you could also even have a wiring harness, maybe a connect, um, some soldering jobs are uh, some wires have been disconnected, bad soldering, etc. But since I've already had the good board in there, uh, before I actually um, switched the boards, I knew every one of these lights work. So uh, a lot of the lamp issues, the uh, blown out bulbs, the wiring issues, those were resolved. So I knew it was the board. So I'm just testing the board here. So the uh, F and U have to do with the board. This one, uh, the T is flashing, which is good. The P is flashing good. The U, R, and E are uh, stuck on, and uh, the S is stuck on as well. Okay, so the stuck on lights are probably the easiest ones to diagnose. Most likely those are the SCR, or the Silicon Control Rectifier. And I should probably give you a little bit of an anatomy lesson here on these boards. Okay, so on the board you have a number of components. Well, uh, the connector is here. Uh, let's see, this is 1, this is 2, and this is J3. So J1, J2, J3 are uh, the, the connectors that bring in, uh, they're basically connected to your, to your lamps. The wires from here go to your lamps. J4 is primarily for power and other uh, connections. Now on the right side of your board here, these are all the SCRs. And you have two sizes. You have a smaller one and a larger one. Now each one of your wires, each lamp, is either connected to a small one or a larger one. And it kind of depends on the uh, power usage of that particular lamp. Now the larger ones are standard um, uh, 106s. So those are the 106 uh, SCRs. The smaller ones are the uh, 2N 5060s and you can uh, get replacements for both of these. They do burn out and I think like Marco uh, Specialties and other uh, companies still uh, sell these. Um, I think maybe Great Plains Electronic also sell those. So these SCRs are not transistors. They look like transistors, but they're not. But essentially you can treat them as transistors. They basically do a very similar thing. Uh, transistors have a, cl a collector base and emanator um, con connected uh, to the boards. Uh, these um, SCRs instead have a cathode, anode, and a gate. Uh, but essentially they, they do very similar things. You can test them differently though. So the other thing you want to be familiar with are these four chips here. One, two, three, four. And these are actually the CD4514. Uh, they are decoder chips. And they basically decode the signals and help uh, activate um, the different SCRs. Now going to my little schematic here again, you can see, okay, so where the wire comes in, let's say uh, lower first U, you can follow that wire all the way here and it will connect to a SCR here. The little double star here means it's the bigger one. Um, if it doesn't have a star, it's, it's the smaller one. So, um, so it's connected there. And then that signal is split off. Uh, one leg goes to a, res a resistor and then into your decoder and uh, so you want to be aware of which is the path of uh, your connection there. The other uh, leg of it goes to a ground. And so if your lamp doesn't work and you know it's related to your board, you want to kind of map this out. You want to ID which lamp is not working and then trace it to which uh, SCR and also uh, which pin to the decoder chip. Uh, some some lamps are connected to uh, U1, some U2, some U3, some U4, so you want to be aware of that. Now again, if the lamps are stuck on, it's most likely due to a short in one of these SCRs, and so you should just essentially think about replacing that component. 
Now if the lamp doesn't work at all and you know it's, you know, you've got a good lamp and it just has to do with the board, it could also do with these SCRs. And so uh, these SCRs can either cause a lock on or just the lamp not working at all. It could also be a trace on the board, these little lines here. Um, basically you look at, at the back of the board and you see all these lines. Those are the traces. Uh, you could get some corrosion and, and maybe uh, the SCR, it has no conductivity to uh, your actual wire and your, your, um, your lamp. There could also be an issue between the SCR and your decoder. There's a resistor that basically separates them. Again, the trace could be bad or that resistor could be bad. And again, your decoder chip could be bad as well. The interesting thing about these decoder chips is they generally organize things uh, based on uh, four pin uh, groupings and so quite often if you have a bad decoder chip uh, you could trace uh, you might have um, four, eight, uh, twelve, sixteen lamps that are blown but they're in kind of groups of four if you just have one or two lamps that are blown most likely it's not your decoder chip I'm not saying it couldn't be but it's usually uh, if you have like four uh, in a grouping and you can look at this, um, the data sheets of your uh, decoder chip and maybe I'll show that right here and you can see there's sort of groupings uh, uh, of, of uh, pins there and they're kind of all kind of connected and you can look at this data sheet and see uh, if maybe if one bank of four all the lamp, lamp, lamps are out well, it could very well be your decoder chip, and so uh, that may be a, a possibility. You need to replace that decoder chip. Okay, so this is the worst of the two boards because it has so many lights, lamps out, and uh, so I'm just gonna take actually a bigger printout here. I'm just gonna mark each one uh, which is out. I'm also gonna note which ones are stuck on, um, and sometimes you get some that are flickering, uh, and maybe periodically work. Uh, again, that, that could be a wire issue too, but uh, it could also be one of those SCRs. So I'm gonna go around and mark this up, make it a note if they're stuck on or not, because if they're stuck on, then it's probably those uh, SCRs. But then we're gonna test out the board. Okay, so I drew up all my little notes here, and you can tell that I have a lot of issues here. A lot of things are out, some of the things are stuck on, uh, I corresponded them to the, uh, these aren't the pins, the pins, the pin numbers are on the right here. Uh, and the resistors, I sort of just labeled everything down. I even went ahead and grabbed the decoder schematics and kind of like, here's those uh, four, um, four pin banks here. There's one, two, three, four. There's, so there's uh, 16, or four banks all together. So, um, and try to see if I can compare some. Some of them, like all these are out on this one. I don't know uh, what that means right now, but we'll uh, take a little closer look. So I do have my multimeter here, and I actually have my old grandpa's logic probe that I'm gonna be using now. If you don't have a logic probe, I re highly recommend you get it and kind of experiment with it because these can help you so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up to uh, volts. I just wanna test, I wanna plug in my logic probe, but I just wanna make sure that um, uh, I might have to put, basically what I'm gonna do is uh, uh, put the ground on uh, test point one here. So I'm gonna put the ground on test point one I'm going to put uh, the positive end on the test point uh, 2 here. And that should be uh, plus 5 volts uh, DC. So I'm going to just make sure I'm getting uh, an adequate voltage so I can plug in my uh, logic probe. So I did get adequate voltage. It's just under 5, which uh, I think it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my negative end to test point 1. Some say don't do this on the same board you're testing, but I really don't care, so. And my positive end in test point two. Okay, these decoder chips are 24 pin chips. And so it's like uh, there's 12 on one side and 12 on the other. 
Now, if you're looking for, you will first want to look for the little notch. And in this case, the notch is straight down. Um, so don't assume that the notch is always up high. The notch is straight down. And fortunately here they say a one. So that's pin one. And there's sometimes a little a dot here as well. So, um, so that is basically how you start counting. You look for that notch and on the left side of the notch, on this, on this case it's right of the chip, is pin one. And then it goes to 12, and then 13 on the other side, and then down to 24. Now my schematic is reverse. It assumes the notch is on top. Uh, here's pin one, pin 24. So I'm just gonna turn this upside down so I'm same orientation as my chip. Okay, so again, I in my little chip diagram here, I did organize the the pins in uh, groups of four. These are basically those uh, banks that when I showed you the data sheet, those are kind of these pins are associated, these pins are associated, these pins are associated, and these pins are associated. Now, on a couple of these, uh, like all four of these, they don't they don't work. These ones they don't work. So I put a question mark on both of those. And so I'm going to test those out. This one, there's three gone. But number eight still works. Uh, this bank, these two work. These are not being utilized. So um, I'm assuming that those banks are okay. Uh, those might be the SCRs uh, that are blown. These ones I want to check. So this is U3. And so I'm going to check that with my uh, logic probe. And so looking at this particular bank, uh, it's pins 17, 18, 19, and 20. So let's take a look at those. And basically what a logic probe does is if if the um, if the voltage is under like two and a half it'll show as low if it's over two and a half it'll show as high it generally uh, is meant to test a five volt um, circuit and uh, it basically and and if it's fluctuating let's say there's a timer and it's fluctuating up and down it'll do pulses so this thing will pulse and so when I do this top uh, pin which should be uh, this should be 12, which I believe is, I think it's ground. It should show a, a actually let, I was doing chip 3, so it should show a low, and it does, so the low sh shines. Now the rest of them on this side should all be flashing because it's sending the signals to the uh, SCR. Uh, so, and I was interested in pins, what was it again, 17 through 20. So that's 24, 23, 22, 21. So this one's 20. Let's see what happens. That's flashing. This one's flashing. This one's flashing, but flashing. Oh, I'm actually blocking you. I'm sorry. Uh, so let's do that again. So let's test bin 20. It's flashing. Uh, 19 is flashing, 18 is flashing, they, they kind of are flashing at different rates. I'm not sure if that's just my old antique uh, logic probe or what, but it is flashing, so at least they're getting some signals. I'm a little bit concerned that they're not flashing at the same rate. Actually, when I push it lighter, maybe it's just where I have the pin, so there you go. Um, so all those banks... Uh, that one bank looks like it's active, so it's probably the uh, SCR that that are blown in those cases, or there's a bad trace. Now I have gone through every one of these chips, and it sort of surprised me, but I was, you know, I was getting flashes on everything. Uh, there's nothing. There's basically signals going through all these chips. So although, uh, well, maybe not that one. Hold on. Yeah, there, there we go. Maybe. Um, these chips look okay, so it's just all the SCRs that are probably damaged, or maybe it's a trace. So let's take this uh, board out and examine it a little more closely. Okay, with the board out of the machine, now again, you can use a logic probe um, to test in, in the machine, but when you think it's the uh, S SCRs or traces like that, you can test traces with the continuity, but with the SCRs, you can actually test them uh, in the diode setting of your multimeter. 
And so I've drawn a couple of pictures here. Uh, this is the uh, um, 2N5060. Uh, th that's the smaller one, and I sort of drew the top of it like that, if you could see that. And if you look at the smaller one just like that, oops, zoom in, you can see it kind of has a flat side, which is the front, but I kind of showed it uh, from the top here. But I showed the uh, left, center, and right uh, legs. Um, and again, uh, these are the cathode, the gate, and the anode side, okay? So the uh, 106, the larger one, now th these ones kind of look the same from both sides, but there's writing on one side, so that's the front of it. And I kind of showed that as the front. And these are a little bit different, uh, you just have to be aware of that. So the left side is the gate, center is the anode, and the right side is the cathode. Now what we're going to be testing to see if these are good is we're going to uh, test the cathode and gauge side on both of these. So remember they're in different locations. And I forget which direction is which uh, when you put positive, negative, etc. with the multimeter. But I do know one side is a, supposedly a, uh, going to be between 0.4 and 0.6 volts on the diode setting. So on my multimeter it's kind of the same as the continuity dial, but then I hit this button and then changes the diode setting. So uh, when you touch both legs, um, the gate and um, the cathode, you should read something between or close to 0.4 to 0.6. And then when you reverse, when you flip them and do it again, cathode and gate, the other side should be uh, 1.4 to 1.6 volts. And I forget which is which, but you just flip them and one side is the lower voltage, one side is the highest voltage. Now, that's good, That's good. you know, it might be a little lower. I think I, on some of these I've been getting like point, uh, point 0.2, which is generally okay. But, you know, you, you kind of want that kind of range. The trick is, even if you're getting those voltages on the cathode and gate, you also want to test uh, the diode, diode reading from cathode to anode, reverse it, cathode to anode. You also want to do gate to anode, then reverse it, gate to anode. Now on the diode setting, they should be off. If you're getting any voltage at all, even zero volts, if, if this reads zero volts, then there's something wrong with that um, uh, SCR. So those should be, when you touch them, it, at least on my multimeter, it should show no reading at all, not even a zero volt. So we're going we're gonna to try that out. And so again, looking at my little diagram here, I kind of want to start with uh, some of these to to uh, top ones here. I know Q14, now these are the smaller uh, uh, SCRs, the, um, the two ends. Um, so the Q14 and Q13 work. And so those should be giving me a decent number. So I want to start with those. And then I want to try 12. So we'll go ahead and test those two first and then go to 12 and see what we get. Okay, so I hope you could see all this. Uh, my multimeter is set to the diode setting. Uh, we are looking at, again, 13 and 14 are good. So those two right there, if you can see them, there's, there's a shadow going on here. Or hold on, let me get a, another light. Okay, so I added a little bit of light. So that's 13 and that's 14. Again, if you look at the little drawing I did right here, I'm looking at the same orientation, so I'm looking at the left and, and center one. So we'll go ahead and set this up again. So the left one is there, the right one's there, and the center one's actually on the other side. So it's, it's kind of like that, but that's the center. So we'll go ahead and try this out. Let's get some better light on the situation here. There you go. And so we will see, let's see, you see the multimeter. So we're going to just test on one direction. So this is number 14, Q14. So we're touching the center and the left. And we're getting 0.629. So it's a little higher than 0.6, but that's still okay, I think. You know, it's like, well, what do you expect, you know? So we reverse the leads or we reverse the uh, probes, and then we are getting 0.2, and that's uh, 1.2, and that's kind of what I was saying. They're kind of showing lower, so 
Um, that's not uh, 1.4 to 1.6 that's recommended kind of literature, but you know, that's close enough for me. Uh, but the important thing is we're going to try the other ones. So we're going to go the gate to the anode. And that's off. Good. Uh, we're going to reverse them just to be sure. I'm getting all tangled up. What do I do? I forget which lead is which. Let's see. That's off. I reverse. And that's still off. Good. Now we're going to go to cathode to anode. Off. And off. Good. Good. So that is a good um, component. And again, number 13 should be good. And let's see, we get a 1.2, reverse, 0.6, that's good. And then we start touching the other ones and it's remaining off. Very good. So next, we're gonna try one that we think is bad. So that's the Q12. So we think that's bad. So we'll go ahead and uh, hit the gate and cathode side. And I am getting nothing. N nothing at all. So reverse that. And that's 1.2. That's our general range. But when I reverse it back again, I should be getting close to 0.6 and it's off. So that one, that's already uh, causing some issues. So let's do the uh, cathode to anode connection. Look at that. I'm getting a 1.2 volt on that. I'm supposed to have, it's supposed to show off. And then I do the gate to anode and that's showing zero volts. Again, it's supposed to be off. So clearly there's something wrong with that uh, SCR. And so I'm going to have to replace that one. Okay, so back to our diagram. We're going to look at the larger uh, 106s. So uh, looking at my diagram here, um, and now again the two stars there on, on my diagram should, uh, represent the larger 106s. So it looks like Q2 um, is working, um, but Q4, where's Q4? I saw Q4, oh no, Q1. Q1 is not. So uh, we'll go ahead and test those. We'll start with Q2. Okay, so with these larger ones, these ones have essentially been, um, can you see here? These ones have been um, soldered, so they're kind of flush. It's kind of hard to get the probe underneath there. So I'm gonna flip this over. So this is Q, gosh, I'm doing badly. This is Q1 and this is Q2. So that's the good one, that's the bad one. So we're gonna flip it over Q2 will be on the bottom, and so we're looking at, uh, let's see if I can do this. This is, so this, these little uh, soldered components right there, that's Q, um, Q2, and this is Q1, those three little things. So you're going to have to do this on the back side if you can't get to those, those little um, um, leads. And so again, if that's the front, when I flip it over, this will be the front up on top. And so that means, let me think here, uh, this is the cathode and this is the gate. So the cathode, excuse me, the cathode is on the left, the gate is on the right, and those are the two I'm testing. So these are what I'm going to be testing. Okay, so again, I think that the top one is number two, which is good. So we'll test that one first. And we're getting 1.2. Reverse them. Just under 0.6, which is fine. But now we're going to touch the other ones. That's remaining off. That's remaining off. So that, that one's good. That, that, that looks good. And that was, uh, it is functional in our game. So this is Q1, which apparently is bad. At least the light's not working. So we'll go ahead and touch that. Ah, 0.2. We're supposed to get, what are we supposed to get? We're supposed to get 1.2 and we're getting 0.2 volts. Not good. The other side is, we, we were getting what? We were getting close to 0.6 on that one. And that's 0.2 again. So you could tell that's nothing, not, this is not good at all. So we're going to just reverse it and we're getting zero volts. That's supposed to be off. 
here's another one this one's again 0.2 that's supposed to be off um, between the anode and uh, gate on that side so clearly this one is bad and has to be replaced so with this particular board I have my work cut out for me let's see if I can back up uh, there's so many things wrong with it I think I'm gonna go to the other board first uh, where I've already kind of tested that one out there's like three or four lamps that aren't working and so that's a lot easier to fix right away this one I have to order some more uh, SCRs just to populate all this stuff and I have to test all the traces as well so I'm gonna do the other board first the other board also the uh, decoder chips work fine so it's just either some traces or the SCRs but that's how you do it um, I'm gonna so you just have to go one by one and figure out which ones are are blown and then desolder it and replace it with new ones. And again, you can perhaps either Marco Specialty or um, Great Plains Electronics um, will get you some of these. So I hope this video helped you out, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.